One of the things I think that makes the BRCs a really great resource is the analysis pipelines and tools that we have. For people who have been using Patrick, they'll find that it's pretty easy to submit jobs using BDBRC. IRD and Viper folks are going to have a little bit of an adjustment, but really stick with it because it's very easy once you get used to it. So today I'm going to show you how to submit jobs in BDBRC. Let's go to the Tools and Services tab at the top. So click on that and that opens a drop down box that shows you all the services and tools that we currently have in BDBRC. And we do add them from time to time. If something ends in a B, that means it's for bacteria only. If it ends in a V, that means right now it's limited to viruses. And if it doesn't have anything after it, that means that you can use it with both bacterial or viral data. So one of the things that we're known for is our annotation pipeline. So I thought I'd just show you how to launch one of those jobs. So I click on annotation and this is a hyperlink that will take me to the job landing page. So this is a job landing page, the ECM BBBRC. Basically, there are just a few things that you have to do from any of the services, not just annotation. You have to identify the data that you want to use. You have to select some parameters. You have to name the job and you have to assign an output folder for the completed job to be stored in. And then when you do all of those things, this button that's gray at the bottom, in this one it says annotate, but in the other services, it'll say something else, but they'll all be gray. But once you've completed all those tasks, then it will turn blue and you can submit your job. If you have any questions about the service, at the top of each page, there's a user guide and there's also a link to the tutorial that tells you what's happening behind the scene in annotation. So if you click on that, it'll open up a new tab that tells you exactly how the annotation service works and how to launch a job. But let's go back to submitting a job. Now for annotation, you need context. If you did an assembly in BVBRC or Patrick, that will be somewhere in your workspace. If you did it outside, you can still annotate your data. We don't demand that you use our pipelines for everything. So if I had done it in BVBRC, I click on the down arrow and that'll show me the contig files that I have used recently. Those are from the most recent to the least recent. But if I knew what it was named, I could start typing and it would show me all the content files it could find within my workspace that began with those letters. Or I could navigate to my workspace and look for specific content files to see if that's what I wanted. Oops, look, that one's zero base pairs. I don't want to use that. But here I could also upload some data. So let's click on the upload monitor. And then it says it's going to be looking for contig files that end in .fa, .fasta, or .fma. So when I click on this, it's going to open a dialog box with my computer where I can navigate to an fma file that I want to use. So you can see I've got that here. And I say start upload. Now it's important to wait until the upload is complete and you can monitor that on the upload monitor and it says it's complete. So I should be able to see it here. And there it is, this 1352.11354. So I click on that. First task completed, I've selected the data. Second task, set the parameters. The first is to choose an annotation recipe. So if I click this down arrow, I can choose either bacteria, archaea, viruses, or bacteriophages. But these are bacterial contexts, so I'm choosing that. So that's part of the second parameter done. Then I have to give it a name. For people who have used Patrick in the past, you've heard me talk about how important it is, if you can, to get to genus for these things to get specific protein families. That's not the case with the viruses or the bacteriophages, but with bacteria, we want to get as far in as we can. 
you have to be able to spell and see it's trying as I'm typing these things in, it's trying to find text that matches. And here it tells me, oh, look, these match. And this is the one I want. So I click on Enterococcus fascium, and it also enters the taxonomy ID. Now I have to put in my label for this. So I'll just call it a test. We're almost done. We've put in the data. We've entered the parameters. We've named it. We just need the output folder. Now I can create a new output folder if I want to. But if I've done one before, I can either click down. That'll show me the most recent ones. Or I can start typing the name and get that. Or if worse comes to worse, I could create a new folder with a new name. But I don't want to do that. Notice that the button is blue. It's ready to annotate. The rocket's on the launching pad. The steam is boiling out or the gases are. And you click annotate. Ta-da! It says the job has been submitted. See, that's how easy it is. Just a few steps. You can monitor its progress on the jobs monitor or the jobs page. And we have a lot of tutorials showing you how to find the job when it's finished and how to examine it. Thanks for watching. Bye.